This is From Hero to Zero, a show about the misconception of the demise of the music industry. We talk to heroes to make sense of the alleged zero, the music business. Hey Tom, how are you? Good, man. Good to see you again. We you met too. last year, by the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. So, Tom, uh, drummer of Exodus, uh, been around for decades in the music industry. Yeah, many moons ago. <laughs> many moon, many super moons ago, <laughs> I suppose, as well. Um, last time we asked you, what was the difference, or what would you see the difference between being a musician today uh -huh. and back in the days when you started? What we would like to know this time is, where do you see the difference about producing, creating, and uh, bringing out an album mm -hmm. in these, de these times compared to before the music business allegedly imploded? Yeah, well, there's a lot of, a lot of differences, I think. And, um, you know, as far as like creating an album and like making music, like that stays the same. It's like pretty much the same formula. It's, it's some people do trading like over the internet, like they'll, they'll you know, a guitarist will write a riff and send it to this guy, check this out, hey, check this out. We do it old school, like, you know, Gary or Lee will write a riff and, and we'll jam it out, like, in a room. Um, as far as, like, making a record, <clears throat> I think the hardest thing nowadays is just to keep things secret until it comes out, you know what I mean? Because it's, okay. it's like, I mean, the internet is, it's kind of a blessing and a curse, you know, where that's concerned. Mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, we've we've survived through both eras, you know, of like the the internet era, which is now, and the era of the past where like, you know, I mean, it sucks to get older, but I'm really happy to have lived through that to where like, you know, you would go to a store and buy an album and like you waited for that album to get created and you go home and you slice the plastic and you pull out the sleeve, you know what I mean? Sure. It, told, it told a big story. Sure. And I think that's probably what's missing. Uh, today and that'll never happen again you know what I mean unless 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 vinyl like really resurges mm -hmm. you know I, I just wanted to ask um, <clears throat> do you think or do you try to somehow replicate that feeling in some sort of way um, I think I mean the feeling stays the same I, I mean I, I still get the same kind of butterflies and the same kind of like you know I guess you know, everybody in our band, we get like a proud papa feeling of when we create a new piece of music or, you know, a new record or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's an accomplishment to do that. I mean, I feel super lucky and fortunate to, to have been in a band that made 10 records and, you know, we're probably on the verge of making number 11 now too. So, you know, cool. there's worst things that could happen to a band. The worst thing? There, uh, are, there are worst things that could happen to a band. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> um, Talking about modern times and mm -hmm. um, vinyl not being that popular <laughs> anymore, or even CDs. Yeah, um, vinyl's kind of coming back though. Don't exactly, you think? I mean, it's coming back definitely. Uh, however, um, nowadays you have you you count music in streams or views yeah. instead of actual physical sales. Yeah. Do you miss the actual physical sales? Well, sure. I mean, it's the sales are what you know, keeps us going. If nobody, if nobody bought the music at all, then we would probably be forced into retirement, you know, because basically, you know, bands, not just us speaking for us, but like a lot of bands, I mean, aside from like Metallica or Beyonce or people who come out of the gate selling 800,000 copies the first day, you know, um, we have to tour, you know, we're kind of basically traveling t-shirt salesman so, <laughs> and that, that that's okay because it like it takes us to amazing places in the world and you know we love seeing other cultures and having other foods and like you know seeing how the rest of the world lives i think it's the best education you can get in your life for sure you know it takes away any like illusions or ignorances about about you know the way the rest of the world gets on and lives you sure. know so i mean it's it's fine. It's a, it's the same, I think. Uh, you or Exodus split up in the mid '90s, and then you guys came back in um, the early 2000s. Yeah. So basically, that was the time when the music business changed, or pretty, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. How did you perceive that change? Did you feel it with the? <laughs> I think the first record came out in 2004. I forgot. I think in the late '90s and the, the early 2000s, we weren't feeling much of anything. We, we were all kind of a mess. So, okay. You know, we we 
we knew about the changes, but we were wrapped up in other problems of drug abuse and sure. you know, sure. doing bad things to ourselves, and we survived. Yeah. For, fortunately, fortunately. <laughs> yeah. Most of us do. <laughs> Your um, Blood In, Blood Out record, which uh -huh. came out a couple of years ago, was the highest peak in record in the Exodus history, yeah. um, which shows that people were waiting or they're buying still records mm -hmm. of Exodus. Why do you think that was? Um, I just think we made a really good batch of songs. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the music has held up great. Like, they sing parts of the verses every night. Like, we see people, even young people, like in the front row, just blah, like singing parts of the songs. And, um, you know, I think the, the addition of, the, or the re addition of Steve coming back, I think, you know, people were excited to see Zed on stage with us. And, and it sounds like a. It, I think it just sounded like a, I wouldn't say a throwback record, but it sounded like a cohesive Exodus album. You know what I mean? Sure. And uh, people tapped into that, I guess, liked sure. it. Um, do you think metal per se, which was almost disappearing towards the end of the 90s? <laughs> you can't kill it. They right? tried. <laughs> Grunge tried. You know, the internet's trying to, but nah. You can't Last kill. time we met, uh, you, um, you quoted Jack Black. Can't kill the metal. Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, He's right. Uh, right? He's a smart guy. Uh, definitely. Um, so why do you think now it's even more popular? Why, why do you think that is? Um, I would have to like say because it's, 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 it's a really good type of music delivered live. And like it's a, um, it's a symbiotic experience between, between the crowd and the band. Like for most shows anyway, like we like... We like to play big festivals, but we like, I think better, our band, we like to play like 500 people in a smaller place. Sweaty and places. Like, not necessarily sweaty, but just more intimate, you know what I mean? Sure. And I think, I think uh, you know, I think people appreciate the talent of people that play this kind of music, and it's not easy, you know? And I think it's just, it's, it's a live experience, and it's fun for everybody, you know? Kind of like Disneyland for metalheads, you know? <laughs> Beautiful quote. <laughs> um, talking about you know, the life experience and the talent behind it, mm -hmm. nowadays many bands use um, backing tracks because yeah. it's kind of uh, expected, I would like to say, maybe, or some say. Uh, do you have an opinion on that? Do you guys use backing tracks? Oh, hell no. <laughs> no everything we do is 100% live. I mean, Backing tracks would require like a click track and would require everybody wearing in ears and stuff like that. And that would take away from like the whole live feel. You know what I mean? It was like Zet has a pair of, um, of in ears monitors that he could use for his singing, but he can't, he can't uh, hear the rest of the band well enough and he can't hear the crowd or it just takes away from the live thing. But I mean, bands like you know, Aerosmith or Def Leppard, you know, I've seen them both play and they're using backing tracks. And I'm kind of used to that because, you know, Def Leppard has like 15 fucking vocal tracks like stacked on each other and, you know, nobody's on the mic and you still hear this step inside, walk this way, you know what I mean? And other bands, I guess. Sure. Yeah. But you guys never tried it. No, we never tried it. And you might not. But we don't even use too many overdubs like in the studio. I mean, we try to not, you know, go too far into overdubbing to where you can't reproduce shit live. I mean, as far as the intro, I think it's okay for an intro to be like big and, you know, orchestral, I guess, and, you know. Sure. But we never try to play it live. We just come in on the boom, you know, where, where the where the riff gets crunchy, you know. Mm -hmm. That's where we come in. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Um, uh, at the beginning of the interview, we were mentioning um, sales and views and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, a question which, um, uh, which pops up in our minds at least uh, very often is, uh, if you would have to rank the importance of your income streams as an artist, what do you think are the most important ones nowadays? Income streams? Are you talking about music via internet? Or are you talking no, about... For yourself as an artist, you know, to to be able to support yourself. Like you were saying, otherwise you would have to retire if nobody would buy your music. But yeah, absolutely. Avenues. I mean, if nobody bought one album, we would definitely be forced into retirement. But it's funny, because like, I think, uh, well, the first, your question, I think uh, merch sales, you know, help us survive and getting out there and playing. Of course, we get paid for playing live. Um, 
and you know, a little bit of album sales uh, mixed in there. But it's funny because like, you know, super, all bands get asked the same question. When's your new record coming out? What's going on with your new record? For us, it's like, we, we still make new records and we love doing it and we love making good new ones, but people still want to hear the old shit <laughs> the most, you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of hard to write a set list, you know, after you got 10 albums, but. I'd say merch, merch sales are the most important thing sure. for us, um, and album sales and, and gig money, and you know, it's a combination of the three, I think. Uh, what but about album sales are the least, least most important these days for a band like us. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that, that said, um, streams through Spotify and so forth, uh -huh. you, do you count that at all? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's important, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean. I'm not too technical, so I, I don't even have Spotify on my phone or anything like that. But you know, they, they've they've channeled it to where bands get paid for people tapping into that music and doing stuff like that. Interesting. Digital cool. downloads and stuff. You know. Um, just very bluntly put, if you could choose, how would you prefer the music business to be, uh, like it is today? You know, all technical, diff many different avenues uh, of to generate income, or as it was before the technological changes? Which one did you prefer? Which one was easier, easier for you as an artist? Okay, there's two ways to look at that. I mean, as an artist, I would prefer, I guess, I guess as an artist and as a, as a, as a music buyer, I would, I would like to go back. I think it would be fun to go back, because I just, just the fun, the fun and the anticipation of, of buying a record and you know what I mean? And the story that it told you, like, it's, that'll never happen again. And, and uh, you know, it sucks that people don't get to experience that. I mean, some people do, like vinyl collectors and, you know, there's lots of, lots of young people that are into vinyl collecting now. It's like, whenever I talk to like a 20 something year old who just bought an album, I'm like, do you have a turntable at home to play that on? And they're like, oh yeah. They're like, I got it you know, thousands of records and probably some of their parents' records too, you know. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so I think, I, think, I think before was funner. Mm. Now it's like, it's almost like a, um, a musical form of ADD, I think, because like people, even if people like a band, they probably don't have the... Uh, the attention span. Yeah, the attention span to like see a song through all the way through or an album all the way through, listen to it, something from A to Z. They just go, oh, that's really cool. What's up? going? I gotta get to the next thing. You know what I mean? It's like rather than like being in the moment. Um, I agree. I mean, I still love buying CDs or vinyls and actually listen to the album while reading the lyrics and yeah, checking yeah. out the credits. Do you do that as well? Um, I've been getting into like just just uh, headphones, just like okay. sitting there and just grooving with headphones. Nice, cool. And like, I did a did a. Uh, ACDC cover cover gig filled in for our singer Zet has a has a side project and learning those songs was so fun, dude. It's like I just was grooving on the headphones all day long, nice. being the drum set. And it's a awesome, good time. sounds really good. <laughs> uh, last question: What's that? Uh, as you mentioned, uh, an eleventh album might come up soon. No, it is. Uh, it is. Yeah. Awesome. So you're working on it. Yeah. Any, any? We got time. We got a lot of time off after this tour, so we're gonna get together and get in a room and do some jamming and make some new music. Very good. Well, we're looking forward to that. Tom, awesome. always a pleasure. Thank you so Same much. Here, All the best. And pleasure. see you again, hopefully. All right. Yeah.